Did you catch this? Did you see it last night live or watch a replay of it? If you haven't, I'm going to put a link to it in the description of this video. And it might be a lengthy video. I might have a timestamp here where you can see where it starts and ends. It lasts for over an hour. But basically, if you don't know what I'm talking about, at the Democratic National Convention, they brought in DJ Cassidy to play a song for each of the delegations that were going to cast ceremonial votes. This is something they always do at conventions. You know, get on the microphone, the great state of Montana, home of, I don't know, flat stuff and big skies, whatever, it's ceremonial stuff. They always do this at, at every convention, but this time they brought a DJ and that was fun. And every delegation had a song that they chose for DJ Cassidy to play. Before I go any further, just understand, this is in no way, shape or form a political post. I'm not endorsing one side or the other, suggesting one side is better than the other. You know, whatever your personal beliefs are, or my personal beliefs, it, it, that has nothing to do with this video. If you have to express some kind of political belief in the comment section, I guess go ahead. But I'm not. <laughs> I don't like to do political stuff. You know, do I have my own political views? Of course I do. Do I express them on social media? No. Why? Because who cares what I think? How about that? But, okay, neither here nor there. Now, I didn't watch this live. I saw the replay. This is something I've been hawking. But this was interesting. They brought a DJ in. And like I said, the delegations chose their own songs. DJ Cassidy did not choose the songs. And the songs related to the state somehow. Sometimes it's an artist from the state. Sometimes it's a song where the state's mentioned. I don't want to do any spoilers in this if you want to check it out. What I did want to do, though, is talk about how this was handled technically. Because there were some things, okay, that I could relate to as a DJ. And I'm looking at this. For instance, when the delegations are on the microphone saying the great territory of D.C. or whatever they say, sometimes I felt like the level of the music was a little loud. It's like, turn it down so we can hear this person. But then I got to thinking, I bet DJ Cassidy has absolutely zero control of this. What I'm thinking is happening is he's sending a zero dB signal out to some main board that has control over, like, whatever it is, 60 microphones. So they're controlling the mic volume and his volume. And all he's doing is doing the song transactions and him seeing it. Who is this guy? Well, I'm not familiar with him, but apparently a lot of famous people are. He's done stuff for Oprah Winfrey, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Jennifer Lopez, and the Obamas. Like, their inaugurations and all kinds of stuff. So, he's kind of that guy, you know, who they were bringing in for this big stuff. There were a couple of interesting things that happened, and I think we can all relate to this as wedding DJs, where maybe you've got a wedding party where they want a song for every person that comes in. You get it all lined up and organized and you don't want to screw this up. You want to make sure the right song is played for the right person. You want to get the cues right and all that stuff. And then last minute, there's a change in the order of things. This happened last night. In fact, it happened immediately. Alabama was first. I think it was Alabama. And they weren't ready yet. So they had to go on to whatever the next state was, Arkansas. I don't remember what it was. And then they went back to Alabama as soon as they were ready. And he was good with the cues on that. He was really good with that. He, he made it happen. He made the on-the-fly adjustment. And that's cool. That's impressive stuff. That's what we all have to do. California, for instance, they weren't ready. So they had to go on to the next one in alphabetical order. And California ended up being last. Minnesota wasn't ready. And that one I thought was interesting because DJ Cassidy's thinking, okay, time for Minnesota. Here's my song. He plays a song. And again, I won't blow it for you. But he plays this one particular song. And then turns out they're not ready to go. So he's got to move on to the next M state or whatever it happens to be and play their song. They go on later, much later, like towards the end. And he has an alternate track that he plays. 
I thought that was cool. So he didn't like catch the thunder. Okay, we know it's coming. This is going to be boring. No, he had another track. That was neat. Georgia. I won't spoil it for you, but Georgia was worth checking out. That was really cool. They kind of stole the show. They really did. Georgia was neat. But yeah, it was a real interesting way to handle this. And it gave it a lot of energy. As far as DJ Cassidy's performance goes, like I said, his cues were on it. I'm sure he had absolutely no control over volumes of microphone or the sound that was somebody else. And if you watch it, you can tell that some are better than others. Some volumes are better than others as far as the track versus the vocal thing. The only weird one was California. They had a couple of songs. And one of the songs that they had was different than any other song that was played that night because it had lyrics on top of it. So you've got their governor trying to say his spiel on the microphone. And in the background, you're hearing a Kendrick Lamar song. And that's the only spoiler I give you. But he's rapping. And it was hard to hear two voices at once. That was distracting. Everything else that DJ Cassidy played, I don't know if he was using stems or he had instrumentals, but there were no vocals on it, really. Except for Georgia, you have to watch that one. And it may have had to do with what Californians wanted. And he, you know how that goes. People want things, and maybe you advise against it, and they're like, no, we really want it, so you got to just do it. As far as DJ Cassie's performance goes, I mean, this was a first. Doing it this way. As far as what level of energy do you bring, and, and what do you say on the microphone, and all those things. Uh, really, he's a trailblazer for all of us. He's done something that no one's done before. This. The roll call. And the only criticism I have, because we're not there, we don't know what the audience is in front of us, we're just watching this this news thing, camera zoomed in, the audio is relatively isolated to what he's saying on the microphone. The only criticism I have is that he shouted himself out a lot. I'm DJ Cassidy. I, I think I heard that at least five times, maybe more. And, you know, I think... Personally, if I were going to do something like this, which I would never do, I might introduce myself at the beginning. And from there on out, I'm going to make it about the event and the people at the event. I'm not going to make it about me. That was the only criticism I have on this performance. What he says on the microphone, I mean, maybe that was something that was predetermined as far as breaks go and, and what he says and all that was approved and all that. that there's got to be some serious planning involved with something like this. I'm sure it wasn't off the cuff anything. I could also relate to the way he had to interact with the secretary and how the secretary kind of treated him at first. Again, a first no one's ever done this before. And the secretary is not an entertainer. The secretary is a secretary. And he's the one on the microphone saying, South Carolina. And then they say something. He says something and then the delegate says something. He kept looking at DJ Cassidy like he had control over mic volume. I'm like, this dude has no control over your mic volume. That is someone on the soundboard. Stop looking at DJ Cassidy. Like, they're looking at him like he's got anything to do with this. He totally doesn't. And I've experienced that a lot with mic volumes and things. For instance, you're DJing at a wedding reception. You've got somebody who's going to make a toaster speech. They're holding the microphone way out here, and they're looking at you like you're an idiot. Turn it up. Or the audience is looking at you like, turn it up, we can't hear. In the meantime, you're thinking to yourself, put that mic closer to your mouth. Or speak up. And people did a really good job with that. Once they kind of saw what was happening with the mic volume versus the level of music, they started screaming on the microphone, which was appropriate. And, you know, in all fairness to the sound person, they, I'm sure had a lot to deal with. This is not only being broadcast through probably a soundboard, but it's also being broadcast to the United Center. What we were hearing through the soundboard may not have been what they were hearing in the United Center. I I, I mean, who knows? But that ah, was cool. It was, it was cool. 
And if you want to give it a watch, give it a watch. It up the game. Next time, uh, next time around when they're having their convention, they have to bring it even more. No matter, you know, what side it is, this up the game, and, and made it fun. Made something that's kind of cringy sometimes a little more fun. That's my opinion on that. But anyway, yeah. What do you think? Let us know in the comment section. Performance in the music selections. If you have any kind of feedback or comments you'd like to make about the music selection. Some of them were funny. I thought were funny. Some of them were cool. And it was interesting because I, I'm i dyslexic. I'm not thinking about things in alphabetical order. But as I'm hearing songs, I'm like, oh, Ohio's next. Or, oh, Idaho's next. Or, oh, Michigan's next. Because I, I understand what they're playing and how that relates to the state. And there were other states and territories who maybe really don't have an official song or maybe a famous artist from their state, so they're just picking something cool. You saw a lot of that. And the variety of music that was chosen was interesting, too, because it was hip-hop, R&B, it was rock, it was top 40, it was country. It was a lot of things. It was, the delegates that picked tracks... I think they did a pretty good job. That was pretty cool. They picked appropriate songs for their state or district or territory. But anyway, all right. Close this video out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Practice and enjoy.